praise be Jesus Christ. The Gospel today, chapter 17 of St. John, is called the priestly prayer of Jesus Christ. When he enters into conversation with his Father. And we see three things in the Gospel that kind of stand out. There's all this talk about glory, giving glory to God, glory to the Father, and also glory for the Son, about eternal life for men. And also our Lord talks about the means by which He goes about giving glory to God and giving eternal life to men, namely, by accomplishing the will of the Father. Our Lord starts off the conversation, or the prayer, to the Father, and, you know, of course, our Lord could have said all of these things silently in His heart to the Father, but for our benefit, He said them aloud, and they had been, have been recorded in the Gospel. And we see that our Lord says, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And, in fact, this is a synthesis of the entire meaning of creation. Why God created anything to begin with. As the First Vatican Council teaches, God created all things for His glory. For God's glory. That's the only reason why anything exists. The world, the stars, the planets, plants, animals, angels, and men all exist to give God glory. And so now in the fullness of time, before our Lord is about to accomplish the redemption, He summarizes by saying this, And now is the time, Father, when I am going to give you glory. And that's the principal reason why our Lord came into the world, was to be the greatest glorifier of the Father, of all creation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the firstborn of all creation. All things exist in Him and through Him and for Him to give glory to the Father. And then our Lord explains how He is going about giving glory to the Father. He says, I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do. By doing my Father's will. That's how Jesus Christ gives glory to the Father, by accomplishing His will in this world. Practically speaking, for Jesus Christ, that was the work of the redemption. Bearing witness to the truth, showing men the way to eternal life, and by obtaining the grace and the merits for men to obtain eternal life. And now he has done this, and the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have accepted them. They have kept your word. Our Lord here speaking about the apostles. He is now handing over what he has received from the Father. All of the teachings, all of what God the Father commands, desires, and wills. He is now hands that over to the apostles. And they accepted them. And they have, <clears throat> and they have kept your word. And that's why Jesus says, And I have been glorified in them. And Jesus Christ was glorified in the apostles because they accepted the word that he gave them. And they have kept his word. And that's why Jesus says, And I have been glorified in them. And now, St. Paul says some very similar things in the first reading that comes from the Acts of the Apostles. He says, I put no value on my life if only I can finish my race and complete the service to which I have been assigned by the Lord Jesus. Again, he is accomplishing the mission entrusted to him by Jesus Christ. And by doing so, he gives glory to Jesus and also to the Father, and he obtains eternal life. And you see, this is above all what is on the mind of St. Paul. 
just accomplishing the mission that was given to him by Jesus Christ. So much so that he has what we could call a holy indifference. A holy indifference about what the consequence is and what will happen with everyone else. I say a holy indifference. I'll make the distinction in just a moment. He says, I did not shrink at all from telling you what was for your benefit. St. Paul is speaking to the Ephesians or the representatives from Ephesus, the presbyters of the church. And he says, I did not shrink at all from telling what was telling you what was for your benefit. St. Paul lays out the whole truth when it's convenient and when it's inconvenient. When they want to accept it and when they don't want to accept it. Because that's his mission. St. Paul has to answer to Jesus Christ for that. He doesn't have to answer to men. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus. And then St. Paul says, I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you. In another translation, that I take the blame for no man's conscience, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. And that is the mission of the church. We don't impose the teachings of the church on men or our faith, but we propose. We present to everybody the entire truth. I take the blame for no man's conscience. Because every individual person to whom the truth is presented has their own conscience to respond to. I am not responsible for your conscience and you are not responsible for mine. But we all have to answer before God. That's what we mean by when we say, one has a uh, moral responsibility. It means they don't have a responsibility necessarily before men, but they do have a responsibility before God. And so St. Paul is saying, I've done my part. I've accomplished my mission. And for this reason, I will obtain eternal life. But I am not responsible for any man's conscience. I've told you the entire truth. And now each and every one of us has also been entrusted a mission by God. St. Pio of Petrocina specifically says this, that every person who is born into this world, God has given them some mission. Could be some great works, like, in fact, St. Pio himself had an enormous mission, was a huge mystic and victim before God for all of us. And it could be a simple, humble mission in this world. But each and every one of us, we have to carry out this mission. You know, whether it be as a priest, a religious, a wife, husband or wife, mother or father. All of these are important in God's eyes and must be fulfilled faithfully and with perseverance. And by doing so, we'll obtain eternal life and we will give glory to Jesus Christ and to His Father.